God chooses what we go through, but we choose how we go through it. And that is today's Morning Moxie. Welcome to the Morning Moxie Show. I am your host, Alicia Sharp, and today we have John Maxwell, part two, about our attitudes. Here's John. Paul says people with a great attitude possess a teachable spirit, which means they look in the mirror, they take correction, they take responsibility for their attitude. We already fill your minds, meditate, practice, okay? Number three, they travel the high road. They travel the high road of life. You see, God chooses what we go through but we choose how we go through it. And the Apostle Paul in verse eight does a phenomenal job teaching high road. Look what he says. Fill your minds and meditate on what? The best, that's high road. Not the worst, that's low. The beautiful, that's high. Not the ugly, that's low. Things to praise, that's high. Not things to curse, that's low. In other words, he says, choose to think and choose to meditate and choose to practice the best things in life. Probably the best known story that Jesus teaches in the Gospels is the prodigal son. All of us know the story of the prodigal son. He's a kid that says, hey, dad, don't like hanging around the house. Got a lot of friends, want to party, give me my money. Off he goes. Long time, partying, having a big time, wasting his dad's money. Comes back home. You know the story. Dad's waiting on him. Dad's looking for him. Dad sees him, comes and hugs him, gives him a ring, robe, the whole deal. Big celebration. Kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a party. The prodigal son had an older brother. Now, this older brother, he stayed at home. He didn't waste his dad's money. He worked the farm. He was just filled with duty and responsibility. And when the younger son came back home, the older brother couldn't handle the fact they're having a party for it. He said, Dad, wait a minute, you're having a party. Look what he did to you. Look what he, look what he did to the family. Look what he did to the money. You're, you're having a party for him. And, and, and what's so interesting about the story is the fact that we always think of the prodigal son as the guy, who, and when he did, he just went out and messed up his whole life. And, and when the story ends, isn't it interesting? The prodigal son is inside the house with Dad having a party, and the older brother is outside the house. Because the attitude of sin in his life, the flesh of sin, and the jealousy and the envy and the strife and all that stuff. And Jesus is just basically saying two things. One, God loves you unconditionally no matter what you did and have done. He will always be ready to take you back. And number two is there are sins in life that will keep you outside the house. And those sins are the sins of the spirit and the flesh. Hey, same home, same parent, same family, same farm. Environment was all the same. Two total different attitudes. And that's true. Two people could be going through the very same situation. One has a good attitude, one has a bad attitude. Two people can be going through a very difficult situation and one sees faith and, and, and stays encouraged and strong and the other one grabs hold of fear and, and, and embraces it until pretty soon they begin to shrink away from life itself. One more laminated card. This is, a, this is the diary of a dog. Here are the excerpts from the dog's diary. 8 a.m., dog food, my favorite thing. 9.30, a car ride, my favorite thing. 9.40, a walk in the park, my favorite thing. 10.30, got rubbed and petted, oh. Oh, my favorite thing. 12 p.m. lunch, my favorite thing. 1 p.m. played ball in the yard, my favorite thing. 3 p.m. wagtail, my favorite thing. 5 p.m. milk bones, my favorite thing. 7 p.m. got to play ball again, my favorite thing. 8 p.m. wow, watch TV with the people. <laughs> my favorite thing. 11 p.m. sleeping on the bed, my favorite thing. These are the excerpts of a cat's diary. <laughs> I see the train a coming. Day 983 of my captivity.
My captors continued to taunt me with bizarre little dangling objects. The only thing that keeps me going is my dream of escape. Don't you love it? Two, same situation, two totally different reactions. Now Paul says travel the high road, and, and, and there are three roads to travel in your notes. The low road, and that's where we treat people worse than, than they treat us. The middle road where we treat people the same as they treat us, and the high road where we treat people better than they treat us. Wow. Okay, Paul says, about the attitude, he says, possess a teachable spirit. If you want to have a great attitude, be teachable. In other words, let me, let others co come into your life and correct you. Take responsibility for your attitude. We've already talked about that. Fill your mind with the right things. Meditate on them. Practice them. Travel the high road. And then he says, there's one more thing ab about the attitude that will help you to embrace the right kind of an attitude so that you can fill your mind and live a fulfilled life. Number four, understand the value. W. Clement Stone said there's a little difference in people, but that little difference makes a big difference. The little difference is attitude. The big difference is whether it's positive or whether it's negative. And Paul understood the value of a good attitude. Look what he says. He said, when you fill your mind and meditate and practice good thinking, the result is God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent Harmonies. In other words, you will begin, when your attitude gets right and you begin to live this fulfilled life, you will begin to live in the rhythm of the grace of God. So, what's the value of a good attitude? Number one, a good attitude has value at the beginning of a task. All's well that begins well. If you don't believe that, ask a surgeon. <laughs> ask the patient who has the surgeon. Ask a coach before the team goes out on the field. Ask a, ask a prof before a test is to be given. The attitude at the beginning determines so much what will happen to your life. Secondly, a good attitude has value in the middle of the task. While we are living our life, I love what Ma Michael Andier said. He said, if you learn to appreciate more of what you already have, you will find you have more to appreciate. Hey, hey, here's what, it, here's what he says. What you appreciate, appreciates. And the more you complain, the less you obtain. And so what you do is you continually, as you live through the middle of your life, just appreciate and be a person of gratitude. And then thirdly, a good attitude has value at the end of the day. At the end of the day. I, I close with this quick thought about my dad. My dad is 89, and I wish, I wish he could be here, and I wish you could meet him because he's an amazing person. He's just, I know he's my dad, but in, he, he's just an amazing person. And if you ever met him, it only takes you three minutes to know he's an amazing person because he has an amazing gift of encouragement, and whoever comes into his presence, he immediately encourages and lifts up. Don't you love people like that? I mean, you just want to be around them, don't they? Because they just build you up. I mean, aren't there some people that just build you up, and aren't there some people that just take you down? You know what I'm talking about, huh? And he just builds them up. And, and so my dad, when my mother passed away, we kind of thought it'd be good to maybe get dad in a kind of an assisted care area so that we didn't want him quite to be alone. He's in wonderful shape and everything. But we just kind of wanted him to be around help and care and people. And, and so there, there's, a, there's Vienna Squares that is a new place. And, and so we decided to put him in. And, and so when he decided that he would go and, and he agreed with us, he said, John, I, I want to be the first one to move in to Vienna Squares. I said, okay, Dad. I said, what, what is that? He said, well, it's obvious. He said, these people are going to be coming from all over, and this is going to be new for them, and they're going to be filled with anxiety and concerns. And he said, I want to be the first one there so that I can meet every one of them at the door and smile and shake their hand and say, my name is Melvin, and I'm your friend, and we're going to have a good time here. And he said, I want to be, I want to be the first one there to encourage them and lift them up. And he said, isn't it wonderful, son? He said, isn't it wonderful? The older you get, he said, the more love you have for people. I said, Dad, it's not true. <laughs> I know that's a real spiritual moment, but it isn't true. Come on now. I know a lot of people, they're getting older. 
but they're not getting better. <laughs> Are you with me? Mm. No, no, no. What my dad didn't say is, isn't it wonderful that as you get older, you can choose to have a great attitude. That nobody can choose it for you and nobody can take it from you. It's yours. So my friend, the Apostle Paul would say to you and to me, choose today to fill your mind with good stuff so that you live a fulfilled life. Well, that was John Maxwell, and you can find that clip on YouTube if you search under John Maxwell Thinking Differently. You can also find out more information about him at his website, johnmaxwell.com. That is all I have for you today. I hope you have an amazing day today that you continue to look up and to trust God because God has you in the palm of his hand. Have a wonderful day. See you again tomorrow. God bless you.